My client's constitutional rights were overtly abused. You don't get out of here, I'm gonna blow your head off! Stop trying to be nice. Get your hands up. What? Get him up! That animal raped my daughter. No! 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 This man's crime of violence would never be punished. What about my daughter's rights? Don't they mean nothing? I certainly didn't go there to be raped. McKee's gonna tear our cops apart. But I warn you, Mr. McKee, if you go too far, I'll stop you. He answered violence with violence. You are not even sorry. for confession? Father, I killed someone. What? I killed a man. Why? He raped my daughter. Are you sorry for what you did? Sorry. You took a human life. It's a serious matter. So is rape. These matters are for the police. We went to the police right after... right after it happened. The district attorney said we didn't have a case. Father, I want you to tell me what I did was right. It's not for me to judge. That animal raped my daughter. Even Jesus forgave those who sinned against him. I'm not Jesus. I'm only a man. In order to receive penance, he must make an act of contrition. I don't know how to do that. Are you sorry for what you did? No. Then the church cannot help you. It's okay if you stay out another day. No, I know, but um, I'm okay. Kitty. What is it? I just want you to know that I... What is it? Is there something you want to tell me? Just be careful. Daddy. Another antifreeze daiquiri. <laughs> Last one. It's going to my head. Good.
You know, it struck me recently that whenever we talk, it's about some lofty moral issue. Well, did you want us to have a shallow conversation, Mr. McKee? Yeah, I think that'd bring new meaning to my life. <sighs> okay, we could do that. Actually, I had something a little more frivolous in mind. And what would that be? acceptable form of foreplay. Mm -hmm. Like this. We could hold each other all night. Mm -hmm. My hands are on you. Your hands are on me. I feel your body. You feel mine. We could stay like this forever. Mr. McKeith. Yeah. Police, we'd like to talk with you. About what? May we come in? You got a warrant? Look, you got something to hide? Why don't you just take a hike, huh? Take a hike. Hey, hey where's this? Hike. I'm trying to be nice. Get, get your hands up. What? Get him up. I'm Detective Garrison. This is my partner, Detective Finch from Homicide. What do you want? I'd like to talk with you. Well, That's I what ask you what you want. Relax. Relax. That's what you want, huh? Relax. Why don't you just relax, Mr. Finnegan, and cooperate, OK? Take it easy. Where were you yesterday? What business is that of yours? Look, Mr. Finnegan, it's a simple enough question. My partner's got about a half-inch fuse and it's just about gone. So make life easier for you, for me, and for him. You understand? <laughs> you ready to talk now? Now we're not going away till you answer our questions. Well, I got nothing to say to you. Where were you yesterday? Look, I want you out of here. And you got no right to do this. You got no right to do this to me. I want you the hell out of my house. Hey, what are you doing over there? What is he doing in the drawers? You don't have a warrant? Look what I found. Recently fired, Mr. Finnegan. That puts the lid on it. Admit it. You understand? Admit it. You did what any man would do, didn't you? Killed a man that raped your daughter. I'm clean. Didn't you? Tell us the truth. Didn't you? Come on, Mr. Finnegan. Didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I did it. I killed him. I killed a bastard. All right, defendant is released on his own recognizance. Next case. Hey, my man. Commonwealth of Massachusetts versus Terrence Finnegan. Your Honor. Miss Connor. Yes, sir. Due to the severity of the offense, the DA requests the prisoner be held without bail. We're seeking murder one. Mr. Finnegan, are you represented by counsel? No. Do you plan to obtain counsel? I can't afford a lawyer. I'm sorry? I can't afford no lawyer. All right, we'll appoint one for you. I want no further proceedings until this man has a lawyer. Yes, sir. Remanded to custody. Let's go. Dad? Come on, this way. Simon McKeith, yes, Your Honor, approach the bench. Sir, think about it, man. You run over a kid out there, that's a murder charge. Maybe you better try an AA meeting. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, I'm appointing you to defend Terrence Finnegan. Uh, Your Honor, don't you think the public defender's office... This is a high-profile case, and the public defender's office is overworked as it is. Your Honor, you may not know this. Need I remind you, Mr. McKee, that you are woefully behind in your court-appointed quota. Now, take this in the good graces with which it is offered. Thank you, Your Honor. I accept. Good. Now, go confer with your client. He's locked up in back. Mr. McKee? How are you, sir?
Hi, I'm Keith. I'm your attorney. The judge appointed me to your case. You don't look too thrilled about it. Yeah. Well, I'm not in this business for thrills. Hey, join the crowd. You hear them tell that I shouldn't even get a trial, just a bullet between the eyes. Massachusetts doesn't have a death penalty, but in your case, I can see if we can work out an exception. Have you ever tried a murder case? Yeah, once, a few years ago. How do I know you can handle it? You don't. Hey, Mr. Finnegan, it could be that no lawyer is going to be able to handle your case if it means getting you off scot-free. Well, you're forgetting something. That pig raped my daughter. I've got the unwritten law on my side. The unwritten law is aptly named. It doesn't exist. And anyone that committed murder on the theory that it did just bought himself room and board at Walpole for life. Are you telling me I should plead guilty to something? When I advise you to plead out, you'll know it. Whose side are you on, anyway? The court says I'm on your side. I don't have to like you or what you did. I'm supposed to defend you to the best of my abilities. You know, I don't think you're the man for this job. Suits me just fine. Oh, McKeith, how's it going with Finnegan? It isn't, Your Honor. I just quit. I've got bad news for you. The papers are already filed with the clerk. You're going to have to rehire yourself. Your Honor, this is just not going to work out. If you don't go back in there and represent him, you're going to be in there with him. You have a nice day, McKeith. Kathleen's mother, she divorced me. Grounds? Cruelty. Did you beat her? Give me a break. That's something a lawyer made up to get the divorce. She took off with another guy. Last I heard, she was somewhere out west. And Kathleen? She decided to live with me. Tell me everything you can about what happened after the alleged rape. Not alleged. It happened. OK. Call the police. I went to see the district attorney. They weren't going to do anything, and then well, you know the rest of the story. Yeah. Hey, what else was I supposed to do? According to the arrest record, you admitted to the killing and gave the gun to the cops. Is that true? That's a lot of crap. They pushed their way in, they held me down, they searched the place, they found the gun, and then I confessed. Well, if we can prove your story, I might be able to keep the gun and the admission out of evidence. What would that mean, exactly? It would mean that you would get away with murder. It's not a problem. Yeah, yeah. Connor's my best trial lawyer. OK, I'll make it a personal priority. Saturday golf? Fine. What's up? McKee's filed a motion to exclude all the evidence against Finnegan in the Randolph murder. Based on? Seems our investigating officers were a bit zealous. How zealous? How zealous? They didn't just cross the line, boss. They erased it. We not only had a bad search, they didn't even Mirandize the guy. That's not a problem. He did it, didn't he? Finnegan murdered the Randolph boy, right? Right. So? I think we should consider dealing. Are you crazy? Do I have to tell you who the Randolph family is? You can do a lot of things in this matter, Beth, but pleading out is not one of them. Old man Randolph wants Finnegan executed. That's going to be hard, considering there's no death penalty. Thanks for the criminal law lesson. Just wish we could have done something for the Finnegan girl in the first place. Hmm. The key's going to tear our cops apart. That's no problem. We have the unwritten law in our favor. The unequal swearing contest. Judges always favor the cops' testimony. Yeah? We got Judge Abrams. That's a problem. But as liberal as he is, he doesn't have the chutzpah to toss this case. I hope you're right. Go ahead, officer. The suspect allowed us to enter. My partner stood. I sat in the couch next to the suspect. I began to question the suspect about his activities on the night in question. He was very evasive. It was at that time that my partner tapped me on the shoulder and he told me to look at the closet. The closet door was wide open, Your Honor, and I saw the gun on the shelf. I went to it, I brought it back, I showed it to the suspect, and I asked him, when was this last fight? He answered, last night. I fight it because he raped my daughter. Your Honor. This is nothing more than a plain view seizure. Clearly, no constitutional rights were violated here. Mr. McKeith's motion should be denied. Mr. McKeith. Let me see if I understand what you just said. After you took the gun from the closet, which was in plain view because the door was open, you showed it to the defendant. Yes. 
And then you said, correct me if I'm wrong, you could tell it had been fired recently because you could smell it had been. Oh, yeah, I did say that. But you really had no idea whether it had been fired recently or not. What do you mean? Come on, detective. You and your partner were playing the smell game. It would have had to have been fired within the prior hour or two in order to smell something. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. So then you lied to the defendant. In a manner of speaking. You wrote everything that happened in your notebook, right? That's right. Well, I have a copy of your report, which you signed. That's your signature, isn't it? Right. You signed this, then? Right, sure. Let me just go back for a second. You saw the gun sitting on the shelf. Yes. You took it, went over to the suspect, and asked him if it had been fired recently. Is that correct? That's correct. Well, according to your report dated January 16th, which you signed, you say, and I quote, the suspect, after questioning, admitted to the murder, then proceeded to hand the gun over to Detective Finch. So please tell me, Detective Garrison, were you lying when you signed this report, or are you lying now? Look, I signed the report, but it was Finch who wrote it. He wrote the story the two of you concocted then, not the story you just testified to, is that correct? Yeah. I beg your pardon? Yes. Nothing further. I want the two of you in my chambers in five minutes. Your Honor. Miss Connor, have you as yet offered Mr. McKeith any reduction of charges? No, Your Honor. This is murder one. Open and shut case. Open and shut is right, Your Honor. Those detectives illegally opened the door and shut out the case. You're always lecturing me on proper behavior. Now you're practically suborning perjury. Okay, McKeith, in your cross-examination, you elicited information that was news to everybody that still doesn't change the fact that Finnegan pulled the trigger. And you are the last person in the world who should question my integrity, Counselor. All right, the battleground is in the courtroom, not in my chamber. Your Honor, we all know what happened in the Finnegan house. The gun and the confession must be excluded. Please. All right, Mr. McKeith, please do not instruct the court as to what its choices are. And neither one of you should assume what I will do with this motion. The two of you should sit down, have a long and serious discussion about this case and what it represents. This court is not interested in going to trial. Look, Terrence, let me see if I can explain this a little more clearly. Manslaughter carries a sentence of five to 15 years. If you're lucky, with good behavior, you'll get out in four. Are you asking me to cop a plea? The judge wants you to plead out. If he denies the motion and we go to trial, we're gonna get stuck with a conviction and an appeal. If you want to argue justifiable homicide, you've got to take the stand and admit to the killing. At that point, his denial of the motion becomes harmless error. But what does that mean? Since you've admitted to the killing, the fact of an illegal search and seizure becomes irrelevant. He's bluffing. He won't deny it. If you lose that bluff and we go to trial and lose, it's mandatory life. I wouldn't bet on a jury acquitting you, Terrence. But he knows. I mean, that judge knows that those cops were lying. He also knows how it's going to feel when he picks up the morning globe and he sees the headline, Randolph killer goes free. Abrams disallows evidence on technicality. He's not made of stone. The plain fact of the matter is you killed a man. What about my rights? What about my daughter's rights? Don't they mean nothing? What about Patrick Randolph's rights? I'm not going to plead guilty because I don't believe I did anything wrong. Hello, Armand. Hi. So? So it's just as I thought. Abrams tossed it right back at us. He wants McKeith and me to talk settlement. Armand, give us a second, please. Sure, no problem. Uh, close the door. Settlement. Beth, I learned a long time ago. The ball can only bounce in your court if you let it. <laughs> what does that mean? It means if we do nothing, the ball stays exactly where it is, in Abrams' court. If we don't offer to reduce this charge, Abrams could grant the motion and Finnegan walks. I know Abrams has a big ego, but he's not tossing this case. Oh, please. You didn't hear the cop's testimony. God, I don't know how many times we have to lecture our cops on how to arrest somebody legally. Beth, you don't get it. The cop's testimony, lies, truths, whatever, it's all irrelevant. At the trial, McKeith will be forced to put Finnegan on stand and he'll confess to the murder. Therefore, no matter how illegal a search is, it's harmless error. Abrams is not going to grant this motion and let this killer go. We're going to trial. Great. And you're going to put Finnegan in prison for life. What then have you and your client decided, Mr. McKeith? We wish to renew our motion to suppress, Your Honor. 
Mr. McKeith, I am denying your motion. Your Honor, you're forcing me to go to trial faced with evidence of a gun and my client's admission, both of which were illegally obtained. It's strictly a question of facts, Mr. McKeith, and this court has made its decision. Your Honor, with all due respect, I'm simply astounded. The evidence is overwhelmingly clear. My client's constitutional rights were overtly abused. This is not law school, Mr. McKeith. And we're talking about a man who admitted committing a murder. Let's not forget that for one second. Now, a trial date will be set at the end of the week. And this court is adjourned. Ms. Connor, approach the bench, please. Now, both you and I know that based upon the conflicting police testimony, I could just as easily have granted McKeith's motion, and Finnegan would have walked. But, Your Honor, the defendant is clearly Ms. guilty. Ms. Connor, what I did was bail you and your office out. Now, hear me on this. I haven't been reversed in six years, and I have no intention of having this case reversed because of your office's sloppy work. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Good. Now, the facts seem to indicate that Finnegan went to Randolph's apartment, shot him, and then left. Now, someone must have seen him either enter or leave. You get your offices on the street and find a witness. Your Honor. I want more evidence than a gun and a confession when we go to trial. Do you understand? Yes. I I've had the cops out there working on this round the clock since Finnegan was arrested. Yeah, well, that's fine, but it isn't good enough, Miss Connor. Excuse me. Patrick's sister and mother sitting next to him. Okay, Mr. McKeith, it's your turn. The defense calls as its first witness, Kathleen Finnegan. that night we went to a party i'm sorry could you speak up kathleen just so the jury can hear we went to a party and where'd you go after the party we went back to his place it was nearby and um he'd been drinking he didn't really want to drive home Sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry. God, that was my fault. Um, do you have any towels for me? I can clean that up. For yeah, you? I got. Uh, I got towels in the bar. In a second's row. Right. What's this? Huh? You have a gun? Oh yeah, home protection.
Uh, why don't we call it a night, huh? What? Come on. I have work tomorrow. I have to get up. No, no, no. You have nowhere to go. Yeah, yeah, I do. No. I, I have to get up early. I have to go to work. I want you to stay. I have to go home. Mm -mm. No. I have to go home. Mm -mm. please. Please, I want to go home. Mm -mm. Yes, I do. Take me home. <laughs> Just one more question. Did you go back to Patrick's place that night planning to have sex with him? I hadn't decided. But I certainly didn't go there to be raped. Mr. Finnegan, please tell the court exactly what happened that night. You mean the night that, uh... Yes, the night that Kathleen came back from Patrick Randolph's apartment. Well, I was watching TV. I don't remember what it was anymore. And uh, Kitty, uh, Kathleen, came in and went straight to her room. Mm -hmm. I went back to her room. Check on her. Mm -hmm. And she was holding her undergarments. Her Brazil bra, whatever you call it, was busted, and then her breasts were... And her skirt was torn. It was ripped apart as if some maniac had... And she was crying. Did she tell you what happened? No, she didn't have to. I knew. She confirmed it. So she did tell you everything about what had happened. How did that make you feel? She's my only daughter. What did you do then? I called the police. What did they do? Practically nothing. They came over, they, they took a statement, they acted like they didn't believe her. I felt... I felt powerless. Then what happened? Well, the next day we, we went to the district attorney. And she, uh... Well, she called it something called a date rape. She said it's hard to prove, and uh, she told me that they weren't going to prosecute it. Okay. Now you're completely frustrated by the system and extremely angry. Then what? I decided I'd go and see this Mr. Randolph. Did you go there to kill him? No, 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 I, I, no. Just wanted to talk to him. I, I wanted to try to understand what he did. So you went to his apartment? Yeah. Were you armed? Hmm, no. Then please tell the court in your own words exactly what happened then. Well, I waited for him to come home and uh, drove up and he parked his car. I followed him in. He didn't know that I was behind him.
Yeah. You filth. I know what you did to my daughter. Your daughter? Don't you play games with me. Her name is Kathleen Finnegan. Oh, her. Is that all you have to say to me? Oh, her! You miserable bastard! Are you crazy? All right, I think you better go now, Pops. You don't even know why I'm here. I don't care. Goodbye. That's right, you don't care. Let's go! You're what am I talking to myself? You don't get out of here, I'm gonna blow your head off, you Dad! You hurt my daughter and you don't even care. Come on! What, do you think I'm kidding? Come on, let's go! Out! Come on. I just want to look at your ugly face. I don't care. Go home to your little uptight little... Look, I was just kidding. Come on! Look! Come on, please! Look, here! There's money you want here! Come on! Here, come on! I watch your money. Come on, please! Come on, come on please! You are not even sorry. No, no! No! Uh. Your witness. Mr. Finnegan, I just would like to clarify one point. How much time elapsed between the time you took Mr. Randolph's gun and the moment you shot him? I don't know. 10, 20 seconds. Maybe 30? Yeah, maybe. Enough time, then, to think about what you were doing, yes? Yeah. So when you were holding Mr. Randolph's gun, you were thinking about killing him, weren't you? Yes, I was. And then you acted on those thoughts, and you murdered him, didn't you? Objection, Your Honor. What comprises murder is for the jury to decide. Your Honor, these facts establish beyond a reasonable doubt that this was a premeditated murder. Mr. Finnegan became nothing more than a vigilante. Your Honor, that is for a jury to decide. Mm, I agree. Objection sustained. Mr. McKeith, I can't even discuss the fact of someone's confession. I know that, Father. I can tell you what kind of man he is. Terence Finnegan took his first communion here. He was confirmed here. He was married here. Up until his wife left, he never missed mass once. I just don't understand what it is he wants. A blue-collar Irish Catholic moralist. This is right, this is wrong. War veteran, devoted to American values, but confused. Suddenly up against it economically, like millions of other Americans. Scared stiff about losing his job. The only thing in life he thinks is pure as Kathleen. And his daughter is violated. He goes to the police, the district attorney for justice. But instead, he gets legalism. And finally, we buffed. So he goes and confronts Patrick Randolph. Then suddenly, all of his rage, kept down so long, boils to the surface. And he takes the law into his own hands. What law? The law that didn't respond to Kathleen's violation? No, Mr. McKeith. Karen Spinnigan was seeking justice from another law. Another law? Lex talionis, the law of revenge. Hey, Father, this is an ancient Rome. Well, sometimes we must look backward to understand the present. Listen, I'm not endorsing it. The church isn't endorsing it. But I'm certainly not going to cast the first stone. We must understand it from his point of view, not ours. Mr. McKeith, I've read the authorities you cited in jury nullification. You're asking me to allow you to argue to the jury that they can ignore my instructions in this case? Yes, I am, Your Honor. But I'm not asking you to sanction the argument, agree with it, or even refrain from telling the jury to obey the law. But I believe the defendant has a right to have this argument made on his behalf. Your Honor, as you would say, this is a law school argument. You know a jury can't ignore what it's already heard? This is outrageous. No, it's not. It's an appeal to what it means to have a jury of your peers, to have the right to be heard. Whether my client was justified or not would be the question he would put to this jury where he's speaking for himself. Hmm. Now, Mr. McKeith, I'm going to allow your argument, but I'm going to tell the jury not to credit it, but uh, I'm going to let you have your say. 
due to the special circumstances of the case and the behavior of some of its participants, we uh, owe the defendant some leeway here. But I warn you, Mr. McKeith, if you go too far, I'll stop you. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Your Honor, prosecution strongly objects. Well, so noted. You may proceed, Mr. McKeith. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the judge will instruct you as to the law on the books that applies to this case. But there are times when a case must be resolved not on the basis of the law on the books, but from the community's deepest understanding of good and evil. If we lose touch with that higher law, then the community itself is lost. This case represents one of those times. Each of you must ask yourself, how would you judge yourself if you were in the place of the defendant when he heard his daughter describe how her cries and pleas for help were ignored by her attacker. When he was told by the DA there would be no investigation, no prosecution, no legal proceeding whatsoever against the criminal. When he confronted his daughter's rapist to hear her ridiculed and to have his pain dismissed and laughed at. When he came to realize that this man's crime of violence would never, never be punished. Here, old man, have some money. I'm above the law. I'm Patrick Randolph, he said. Aaron Finnegan didn't go to that house with a gun or even a plan. But right there, in that moment that he described to you, he answered violence with violence. Are there none of you who would have done the same? Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard the defense argument, and you will notice that uh, I did not interrupt it. But I want to instruct you that Mr. McKeith's view is not correct, not as a matter of law or justice. There are no times when a jury can decide on its own about goodness or evil, independent of the statutory laws of the community. We have laws which define murder and which leave no room for jury amendment. The intentional killing of a human being by premeditation and malice is murder. And it misunderstands democracy to argue that a jury can ignore or alter what our representatives have enacted. Now, if you find that the defendant violated the statute prohibiting murder beyond a reasonable doubt, then you must find the defendant guilty as charged. Waiting is driving me nuts. Me too. Who's a... Who is a good argument that McKeith guy made to the jury? I don't know. I don't know if I agree with it. What are you talking about? Well, this violence for violence thing, it's... I did it for you. Kitty, that man raped you, and they let him go. I couldn't stand that. I couldn't let him... I couldn't let him get away with that. Don't you think I know that? What? Daddy, all my life, I have kept things from you. And since the last time we spoke, I've been thinking about it, and now I know why. I didn't even want you to know about Patrick. When the DA said that they couldn't prosecute, I knew how ashamed and how angry you were. At that moment, I want to hurt him, too, but as bad as I felt, I knew I'd get over it. Kitty, I've always tried to be a good father to you. You have been. You really have.
Mr. Foreman, has the jury reached a verdict? Your Honor, uh, we have been unable to reach a verdict. Now I'm going to discharge the jury and remand Mr. Finnegan back to jail until the prosecution decides whether it wants to prosecute again. This court is adjourned. What about manslaughter? Recommendation for early parole will be out in four years. Is that speculation or an offer? It's an offer. Your first and your last. <laughs> I may not be around to bargaining. I'll take it to my client. Hey, Connor. Yeah. He's not going to fire you. You're the best he's got. Manslaughter? OK, I'll accept that. What? I've been doing a lot of thinking since I've been in here. I took that young man's life as a price that's got to be paid for that. What happened to you? I wanted those 12 people to judge me. I didn't want to do some kind of deal with a guy in a suit. Well, I got that, but all during the trial, I kept looking back and seeing that family, that father and mother and that sister. I knew that because of me, they'd never see him again. And Kitty came here and talked to me, and I realized that no matter how much he hurt her, by killing him, I, I hurt her more. OK. Uh, I'll arrange everything. Back. Thanks. What's wrong? Nothing. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. I guess Terrence Finnegan, he just made me question everything. Everything? Does that include me? No. You're the one thing I'm sure of. <laughs> I just, God, I feel really good. I feel good about myself. Maybe we should alert the media. <laughs> I feel good about you, too. Well, come on. Why don't you come back to bed? I can't sleep. I've just been thinking about everything, you know? I've just been thinking about my whole life. The law, what I'm gonna do, how it all falls apart and it comes back together again. You know, like what it's really about. I, know. I mean, I, I know what you're feeling. Sometimes at school, I find a kid who I don't understand at all, and I think at first it's because he doesn't like me or whatever, and then it dawns on me that he lives in this totally different world from mine, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, his wants and his needs and his desires and his motivations are completely alien to me, but they're so clear, you know? And they're so absolute that they can't be denied. So I just let myself be taught. Yeah. Hey. I thought we weren't going to take ourselves so seriously anymore. So what do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs>
Tomorrow night, Totally Hidden Video invites a few unsuspecting victims to dinner. Only this will be one dining experience they'll never forget. Then it's the most provocative, unique new series on television, Yearbook, followed by an all-new episode of Cops, all tomorrow night.